come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Dear friends, I want to take this opportunity to talk to you about potholes. <laughs> about about Casper Mattress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have potholes you have where pot- you live? I only... Only when I come back to this place do I experience potholes. <laughs> okay, so tell them the truth it's a here. Regional phenomenon. It's, it's a. Mm, it's a I think it's thing. anywhere there's snow. There's there's potholes. I, mean, I think it's a Midwestern problem in general. Holy Jesus! I mean, I'm talking about potholes that can pretty much swallow your entire I, I car. I fear for my car when I come back to this town. Yeah, they're gigantic. It's bad. It's, it's amazing. Bad. I don't feel good. <sighs> It makes me not want to come here. You got people who uh, are breaking rims. That's what happens. You ride in a mm-hmm. pothole and it fucking destroys, I'm shatters. I'm really curious how you're going to segue out of this. What we're talking about. <laughs> That's right. I can't do it. This is the Saturday Night Freak Show <laughs> podcast. Uh, an odd choice to start, but uh, you know. It was on my mind. I'm, uh, hey, I'm all for it. I'm all for something different. <laughs> That's fine. We need to keep our, our listeners on our toes because then they'll be like, wait, what? Yeah. I, what I is he saying? Right I need to show? pay attention to this. I don't know. Should I change the channel? No, you shouldn't. It's weird, though. I listen to some podcasts where they don't tell people that they're recording, and you just kind of yeah, come they do a cold open. It. Yeah, I hate and they that. just they just go into it. Yeah, but that's kind of what well, I Colin, you hate it, but no, you just did Colin, it to yourself. Right? Colin likes to be prepared. Colin likes the <laughs> analytics. <laughs> Colin likes the data. Yeah, he oh, likes yeah. structure. Mm-hmm. This is what Colin this is, very is true. here for. Mm-hmm. I have all that stuff. I should like print it out, put it on our wall next to our wall of fame. Yeah, don't do that. How do people get on the wall of fame in this on this show? Uh, they have to be on the show um, three or more times. Well, not physically on the show. Well, no. They have to be in a movie. That would be great. Though. That yeah. we discuss three or more times, preferably no, in a prominent role. We we say that, but then we don't follow through with it <laughs> because we're pretty much, oh, we had a cameo in this well, one. It's yeah, on the wall that's now. That's why we have the hallway, the hallway of, of fame. fame for those people. <laughs> yeah. The hallway of fame. I like this. This is good. Well, what we do here. You're making your way to the hall. It's down the that's hallway. Right. And where most of the people promoted. are. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The, the cavern as you enter the, the sure. dank, dark basement. Yes. So we watch movies every week that are chosen around Robin by members of the Saturday Night Freak Show. That's and then us. we talk about them for your listening pleasure. You can find us on uh, iTunes or wherever you find uh, other podcasts. But it turns out, thanks to those analytics, most of you are listening on iTunes. Um, so who are these people who are going to be talking to you tonight? Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Colin. Colin, what did we watch tonight? Tonight we watched a movie called... The Burning. The Burning from the year... 1981. Directed by... <laughs> someone on the video box no, no, no. that we're looking uh, at. Hold it over here so you can't see. Tony... Malum, Malum, oh, Malum. Yeah. yeah, Tony Malum. Yeah, you know Tony. Oh, yeah. Actually, I have seen another of Tony's movies. Well, yeah, we have. You I mentioned have it during the show. You mentioned. Well, you mentioned it during the. He went on to direct. Uh, what was it? Part two of. Uh, did he? What What did you say he directed? I didn't. You did in the middle of watching this movie. You said, "Oh no, no, the, oh, the, the editor, editor." I'm sorry, you're right. Jack the Shoulder, who Jack Shoulder, this directed a Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two, right? That's and right. the Hidden. Uh, but uh, Tony Malum Has directed done. this movie called Split Second that starred Rutger Hauer, and it had like the alien in it, or a thing that looked oh. like the alien. And it took place in a flooded New York of the future. This sounds great. Only the alien was Satan. That sounds cool. Why? Where is yeah. this movie? I don't know. I what saw is it this? in the theater in like 1990. This that made the it theater? to the theater. It made it to yeah. It was a theatrical <laughs> like kind of low budget. What year? What year? 92. Oh, we were desperate. 92? We were desperate, weren't we? Mm-hmm. And you I could have get never anything in the theater in 92. It feels like it. 91, 92, you <laughs> yeah. could get well, anything in there. It was like in, in the there. hardware years. So it was yeah. like, oh, I think they were close together. It was like, you could see yes. hardware oh. and then split second. <laughs> the hardware years. It might have been a trailer. Oh, those were desperate years. I like that movie. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. Over oh, hardware. I know Killer you do. Robots. It's fantastic. I know you do. Fucking um, hardware. Yeah, there's a lot of people, uh, it turns out, in this movie that right. might starring. have gone on to do other things. Starring who? Uh, starring, I mean, many people. We have, uh, well, are they stars? I mean, Jason Alexander feels like a star of this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, we also have... Who we will just call George Costanza from mm-hmm. here. Well, sure. Yeah. As you would know him as. Yeah. Uh, he has hair in this Fisher movie. Fisher Stevens? Fisher Stevens is in this yeah. movie. Mm-hmm. The star of Hackers. Yeah. 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 Hackers? Yeah. 
fucking hacker. I've seen hackers. That's oh, we've all been. seen hackers. No, short oh, no, circuit. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Back up a minute. First of all, uh, what is the fucking newspaper? First edition? Uh, edition? Early edition. Early edition. <laughs> Fuck, I knew was it was a no, no, that no, was no, Kyle no. Chandler. Kyle Chandler, but he was his friend throughout the entire series. Uh, Wasn't didn't they have a cat? Didn't there the was cat? a cat. The yeah. cat delivered the newspaper. Yeah. Yep. Uh, a, a, like a day to early. Kyle Chandler, to yeah. Kyle Chandler a day early, and then he could like whatever headline he would pick out of the newspaper. He could like there was a murder. Or yeah, was so a, he could stop thing. it from so happening. He could stop it from happening. Yeah, yeah. I watched the shit out of the show. No, no, really? You don't know what early edition in that period of time. Oh my god, early edition. It was CBS. Yes, right? It was a network TV yeah, series. Yeah. There were crossovers yeah. with that and other shows. Yeah. Oh my really? god. Early yeah. edition. Kind of like Roseanne. Really? Uh, no. Whatever the kind of more Friday like, stuff were. Kind of more like when NBC would do, what was it called? When NBC would make all the shows intersect with each other. Yeah. Like they did the wasn't blackout it, episode was, in New York and like everyone was experiencing uh, a blackout. Yeah. What was that called? It wasn't Ooh, TGI remember. Friday because that was no. ABC. No, no. It, they had a thing where they would they would make them all uh, intersect everybody's with Everybody's yelling at us right now. They're like, Probably. it's yeah. this. And we're yeah. like, we don't know. All right. I know what you're talking about. Right, that. Short Circuit 1 and 2, Fish yep. Stevens, obviously, mm-hmm. him playing brown face in that movie. I thought yeah. the guy was an Indian. Like, I, I mean, you know what? That was the first thing I ever saw him. Yeah. First thing I ever I saw him, I did of, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, I, I thought like, oh, there's this guy. I thought that was yeah. the guy. Perfect. Little And later I learned his sister Stevens. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. This is wrong. Did you guys know he dated Michelle Pfeiffer for a time? Did he? Yes. Bravo to him. <laughs> <laughs> bravo, sir. Top of the world, <laughs> Fisher Stevens. I mean, bravo. Uh, who else did we? Well, we said Holly Hunter. Holly Hunter, Holly Hunter is yeah. in the movie. Yeah. yeah, not as featured as the other two. Right, but and she is in there. The girl her, from her uh, speech impediment hasn't developed yet either. Apparently Whatever that not. weird speech pattern. Apparently she has. Apparently not. Like she's from Texas. She, but she has the, that right. That's slurring. a speech impediment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she also, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. She also doesn't open her mouth when she speaks and talks out of the side of her mouth well, all yeah, the I was time. Say, yeah, part of her mouth that got closed down. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. it's uh, later oh, on yeah. in her years. Yeah. Oh. Tried, oh. That's why whenever I see her, is the I'm choice not being fun. I'm just stating a fact. This is how she talks. It bothers me. I don't like That's how I talk. They'd be like, yeah, that's how I talk. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's just saying. It's it's one of those things that when we they pick her. her to be a voice actor, you're like, oh, so you're going for a specific thing mm. if you want Holly sure. Hunter to be a Look voice actor in the movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. what she's doing. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. that's that's her major mm-hmm. uh voice acting work, I believe. Yeah. Wasn't she, Wasn't in, she in broadcast action? news? Broadcast news. Yeah. She is I recently got Crash David I recently got the criterion of broadcast news. Mm-hmm. Uh, still a great movie. Yeah, applaud me. Well, I now, mean, I'll yeah. Just, well, Anytime no, you can, buy a Criterion. Yeah. Well, no, I, mean, I still like, I bought it because like, it's still a really good movie and she's like fucking adorable in that movie. Mm-hmm. Like, I love her in that movie. Love that character. She's great. Yeah. Just want to sing her praises for that one. Didn't it's she like, get blown the fuck up in Justice League too? She did. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, uh, it was yeah. Uh, Batman, Batman versus, versus Superman. Superman. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, yeah. The, yeah. with the urine. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And Grandma's peach tea. Grandma's yeah. peach tea. And then she got blown up. That was my biggest takeaway from that movie. Was what a way to go scene. for Holly Hunter. Mm-hmm. Like, I apologize for us putting you through that. I feel like that's our fault. <laughs> no, uh, no, don't. Mm, I'm no, not taking you know, responsibility uh, for that. Uh, I didn't just, write that movie. I didn't either, but damn. She probably deserved better. A lot of people deserve better with that movie. Even maybe just the They got paid a lot of money. I don't feel bad. Form. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you know there's, what's there's weird about that. that movie? Like, I, <laughs> Whoa, the first right, time that lot. I saw it, I sat there and I was like, "This is wrong with it. This is wrong with it. This sucks on so many levels." But like, I can go back and watch that. It's eminently watchable. Is that a good? I've only watchable? seen it on a plane. Maybe so. so. Yeah, I gotta watch it's it. A watchable movie. Even I though haven't. It is uh, so. F- Awful. <laughs> I haven't watched it since the theater. I, mm-hmm. I have not seen the ultimate edition of it, although I do want to. Maybe mm-hmm. that says something for it where I'm just like, I'd watch that again. Yeah. Well, just yeah. to figure There's it a out. Zack Snyder Fest coming up somewhere where they're doing Gross. this. Jesus. Zack Snyder. Do we uncut? release the Snyder cut? Or it's the, it's I'm kidding, the I'm kidding. Zack Snyder director's cuts, and they're doing Watchmen, Dawn there's of no the Dead. Di- and... There's no director's cut of. Uh, well, there's the ultimate edition, yeah, the ultimate I guess. Edition. So, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking Justice League, where everyone had a fucking problem. Right. Like yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Snyder cut. That's here. It'll come out eventually, I'm sure. It doesn't exist, Colin. They say Uh, it does. They the ah, it will. No, that's that's the nerd. That's the nerd rage. That That was the whole point. Well, maybe it's uh, you know, internet uh, definitely nerd rage. That he actually, they said later that there was a finished version of. uh, So why did they bring Joss Whedon in at all then? Because they wanted to change the direction. Do we get Superman in a black suit? I mean, come on, this is all I want to know. I don't care. I don't. I wish they would just. (laughs) We will know someday. Maybe twenty to forty. Years well, we also now. know, like, uh, it feels like it'll happen on the same time. We know what the fuck happened with the new Halloween movie. 
with the shit they had to reshoot and all that stuff mm-hmm. yeah. that they yeah. won't ever talk about, mm-hmm. which is, you get this feeling? I get this feeling. There's, oh yeah, there's, there's, uh, it's a whole different discussion. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah okay. it's a whole different thing. They're not telling ten, us ten everything in, is all we I'm saying. We haven't even talked about the burning. The all burning. Right. We're in the right. burning. So we're course correcting the, into the burning. All right, so the burning. We've talked about like who directs, who yeah. uh, edits, who stars. Uh, special effects for this The movie, star Colin. of the, the burning. The star. One would argue. Tom Savini. Tom mm-hmm. Savini. All right, so have we had a Tom Savini love fest on this show yet? Uh, it's minor here or there, but never like, I don't is think he on the Wall of Fame? He, yeah, he has oh, to be. Definitely. Okay, are we I don't counting? Think I don't are think we, we fully acknowledged it, but yes, he definitely is and should be. Well, because we, we, we did the Dawn of the Dead remake in which he has a cameo appearance. Sure, mm-hmm. yes. And uh, we did Monkey Shines, which he yep. did the special effects for. Okay, good. And we also did... I mean, we've done this movie, so, like that, so this puts, it, there's, puts him on there. No, there's at least do one other. We have not done we Maniac. We have not done Maniac. Yeah. yeah. Ah, shit. There's one other movie that we did, but it'll come to me. Okay, so anyway. Yeah. Tom Savini. Tom Savini. Is uh, still, I mean, regarded, I think, now as more as a legend more than anything else. In I think so. Makeup effects work more mm-hmm. so than anything he's doing now because he doesn't. Uh, he acts now every once. Yeah, in he a while. doesn't do effects now, does he? Does a lot of conventions. Conventions. He does. Yeah, he's uh, a personality now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Well, it's weird that his career like spanned. I mean, it seems like about. I mean, maybe it was twenty years tops, but it seems it like about like, yeah. within like ten years or something like that. Right. And when I was looking over his filmography, the thing that stood out to me is that Tom Savini, as an effects artist. Never made a studio movie. Hmm. They are all independent films. I mean, he did a lot of George Romero I respect films. That. Yeah, good um, for him. Yeah. Yeah, but I wonder if that's why, you know, his career never, you know, because I mean, like his protégés were um, um, Greg uh, Nicotero. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, because I think they had worked together on Dawn, Day of the Dead. Yeah. Right, they'd worked at K and B. The guys, at yeah, least Greg yeah. Nicotero, was on uh, right. Day of the Dead, and then he spun off. And I mean, he basically is the Tom Savini of today. Right? But yes, Nicotero is still working, still directing. Yes. He's you know in charge of The Walking Dead, from what I understand, basically, and uh, you know still doing makeup effects and stuff like that. But Savini, he went off to form a uh, fil- uh, like a makeup effects school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know which- a couple of people that went there. Yeah, it's just like he's like d- doing the school. Some, wasn't there a problem with the school or something, or management or something like that? I know it was, it's really expensive. This, oh, there always is. Right, but beyond that, it's, I don't know much. It's always yeah. one of those things where if you go through like uh, uh, probably Rue Morgue or Fangoria, you always see the little, the magazine advertisements for the Tom Zavini School of mm-hmm. Special Effects and everything. Mm-hmm. That's where I always saw him mm-hmm. um, and on horror websites. It was always advertisements for his school. Yeah. That was the big thing. And uh, well, I remember first, I think probably becoming aware of, you know, that there is this guy named Tom Savini because Fangoria magazine way back in the golden age had, uh, they released two things. uh, Like one of the first things they did in home video uh, were these things called scream grates. There were two that Mm. I can remember. I can't remember what the second one was, but the first one was like all about Tom Savini. I think I remember this. Yeah. Because there's a famous painting that if you see it, it, it turns out that's the Scream Grades cover. But it was all about Tom Savini and his makeup illusions. And then I think that like went, as far as I was concerned, like toward making this guy a star. Like I knew who he was. There was Dick Smith, who I was less familiar with. Yeah. But you hear like Dick Smith. And, yeah. You know, he's the guy who turned, uh, you know, uh, Dustin Hoffman into an old guy in Little Big Man. And he worked on The Exorcist, <laughs> you know. And ghost story and stuff like that, you know. But scream, scream grades. Yeah, that's what it's called. Scream. Yeah, that's the that's the thing I was thinking of. That I used to see on repeat all the time. I I forget what or what I had it on video. I had it like on VHS. It was like Scream Rates Volume One. Yeah, it's all Tom Savini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You had it. Yes. You son of a. I had it and I watched it all the fucking time. Oh my god. Was there a lot of creep show in that? If I'm remembering, I feel like like heavy creep show. There was a lot of creep show. I remember a lot. I mean, it went through everything. Oh shit. I remember. Yeah. Damn. I'm. It's like recovered memories right now. (laughs) It's like holy shit. I used to watch that on repeat all the time. Yeah. 
Oh my god! Did you ever try? Were you like a makeup makeup person? No, I never like tried to get into it and everything that, uh, until later because I knew people who would experiment with this stuff and I and I got into it, but never like tried to do it at home. Yeah. I was never the Tommy, the young Tommy Jarvis making right. my yeah, own yeah, masks yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. blood effects and everything. I yeah. never got that far into it, but yeah. I always fascinated with it. I remember and that's how I got introduced to Tom Savini. When I, there was a place here called um, what was it the like it wasn't the Magic Castle. It was called like. There Something like castle. that. There was a little like magic shop, and I remember going in here? there and like yeah, and looking for yeah, it was across from the mall. Oh. Yeah, way back in the day, I can't remember <laughs> the fucking name of it. It's like the magic hat. That doesn't sound right. The I mean, maybe <laughs> the magic castle. It would be the magic hat, but it had. Uh, I think they sold liquid latex there, mm. and that was like the first time that you know, because I mean, everything that you hear about like making these prosthetic, you know, things or makeup yeah. effects. It's like you gotta have latex, liquid latex. latex. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think you know, for Stippling. being a kid, it you gotta was stipple. expensive for whatever. Yes. So like, it never went any really further than that. Sure. All, <clears throat> those Halloween makeup kits and stuff. Right. Like that. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. Um. So there went my career in. Uh, yeah. In yeah. <laughs> None of us ever got into it. <laughs> but uh, Savini, uh, interesting guy because um, you guys know the story of Tom Savini and his, uh, you know, like. How he got into the business? Not really. Here, All right. Well, I will there. tell here you. In there, regale us, Colin. So the guy is, uh, I think he was like a gymnast in school uh, when he grew up, and then uh, he got drafted into uh, the uh, army. He served. I have heard in, this in, in Nam, Vietnam, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. But he I was have heard this. Really? Yeah. Photographer. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That. Yes. I that's that. that's why he can make such realistic gore. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because he always says, uh, you know, like everybody who does, uh, you know, death scenes, they always do it wrong because he's like, they always, you know, the, the jaw always drops. It always goes slack every mm-hmm. single time. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, nobody ever does it right. And he's like, and so in all of my movies, like when people <laughs> die, their jaw falls open. And he said, you know, basically the idea that uh, he had a camera gave him a separation from what he was seeing, you know, as he well, see good, people otherwise. blown apart, you know, Oof. he, uh, you know, seeing it through the camera somehow, like a you know, thing in Blair Witch, it made it a little less real. You sure. Know? Uh, but he experienced real horror, I guess, in Vietnam. And then when he came back, <clears throat> and he became like an actor, a stuntman, and a makeup effects guy. Yeah. And you really should go back and look at uh, some of the early George Romero movies, two of them specifically. One is uh, Martin. Uh, the vampire movie, because okay. Tom Savini has like a decent part in that, but he has a bigger part opposite Ed Harris in a movie called Night Riders. You guys ever heard of this movie? I've heard of it, but I've never seen never it. Never seen it. It's uh, these like uh, Ed Harris leads. He's like the King Arthur kind of in a in a group of uh, modern day, well for the seventies, kind of hippie. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you call it? Renaissance players that kind of move around. Mm-hmm. And except they joust on motorcycles. <laughs> cool. And, uh, and Tom do it. Cool. is the Black Knight, basically. Shit. All uh, right. Antagonist. Sounds of. awesome. It is like a, yeah, I mean, it's long, but it's like this epic kind of low budget, you know, thing that I think Romero was trying to get out of the zombie, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, the genre that he was kind of pigeonholed in sure. after, uh, you know, Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead. I mean, he'd done the crazies and all that. But uh, mm-hmm. Savini did the makeup effects for Dawn of the Dead, which I think is basically, that's the movie that kind of puts him on the map. Yeah. Because the makeup effects in that movie are just hideously <laughs> gross. You know, I, I don't know that people had really seen anything like that. Uh, the Famously, the movie ads for Dawn of the Dead say, uh, you know, like no one under 17 will be admitted. Mm, it's unrated. Yeah. You know, because when you watch it, it's like this is beyond an R rating. Yeah. At the time, you know, people getting chunks taken out of them yeah. and their guts pulled out. And, it's you know, growth. Yeah. But fantastic. But oh, yes. Yeah. And then he went on to uh, famously, he was the guy who created uh, Jason Voorhees. Yes, he did. In the Friday the 13th movies. We're talking the drowned Jason. Right. The jumping out of the uh, lake, grabbing Alice Jason. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And he uh, then famously killed Jason because he was, he was, he created, he did the makeup effects for Friday the 13th. And then, and then didn't do two or three. Right. And I, because I'm, I, I'm recently watching Crystal Lake Memories. And so they're doing a lot of interviews with him and everything, all that. And uh, he didn't come back for it because he didn't understand why 
uh, Jason would be up and around killing people because he's like, oh, well, that was a it wasn't real, and b he the Jason is dead, so like and he his, didn't, yeah, yeah, he didn't understand why this would be a no thing. Jason. It was There's, just a yeah. figment of her imagination, right? So, so he didn't understand it, so he was out after that. But uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, is that just something that he says, or because professionally, well, I mean, but there's, he took I'm, the burning the next year, right? I mean, but there, doing there's Friday the Thirteenth Part there's Two. There's the gap, like we're. 20, 30 years on from all that stuff. So that's what they say now. So who knows? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, probably what like his big, well, he did Maniac, obviously. Uh, uh, Which he he's like, he has like a cameo appearance that one of his own effects is used on his character. And it's awesome. He <laughs> blows his own head off. It's, well, it's uh, great. Yeah, his head blows it's, off. And it's a freaking watermelon that explodes. And it's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's hideous. That's what I think of when I think of Tom Savini's that head exploding. Yeah. It's awesome. Because it's his head exploding. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Disco that Boy. That must his yeah. favorite <laughs> That's day. Right. That's yeah, right. he's credited as Disco <laughs> Boy. Yeah. yeah, That's great. I love that movie. Man, that movie is hideous, too. Hideous. Yeah. It's a sleazy hideous. movie. Sleazy. Yeah. And I think that, you know, coupled with the um, the kind of sadism, there's something about Tom Savini's makeup, of, you know, like his murder sequences, because all these movies would do the these yeah. uh, death scenes in the 80s, mm-hmm. the slasher movies. That's kind of what they're based mm-hmm. around. Yes. Which they all... You know, are taking a template that, you know, that came from Black Christmas and Halloween. But the, you know, if if Halloween lights the fuse, it's Friday the 13th is the fire, right? And then all of these movies are trying to cash in and we're just going to be gorier than the last one and, you know, uh, and have these uh, creative, gory, uh, you know, murder illusions, right? Mm. But Savini, I think at some point had it in his contract where uh, he actually directs his murders, his effect scenes. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. he's the only guy who knows like, you know, well, I got to cut here because you're going to see this. Now the thing right. coming out the back of the guy's head or whatever. Mm-hmm. Who knows better than the guy setting up the effect and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there's something to his, I mean, like they're cruel. There's like a sure. squishiness to the flesh that he has. Like the, like the way the flesh gets punctured in his effects, that has like a elasticity and a squish to it that is extra gross. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a viciousness to it. And there's like, know? they always seem to have like a, a kind of a two part punch. There's like, mm. you know, mm-hmm. something horrible happens and then, you know, the person is in pain, or, you know, and you, they read like they're in, you know, reads to well, the yeah, viewer. It's, just, visually it's always, it's always the hit. And then, like the, the face, and, and the then face, like the, the pain. second, and then the second hit, yeah. where it's just like, psh, and then the blood bubbling yes. out. Yeah, there's always, yeah, yeah. that, that, that. That yeah. seems to be it. Yeah. yeah, he did this movie called The Prowler, which I was actually. Which I gotta see this movie. I have not know, seen this movie, and it keeps getting brought up. Aside from you, it keeps getting brought up for like its viciousness in effects and what have you. Yeah, and it's just a fucking. Well, so I'm trying to think, like, what's the cruelest things that he's... I mean, I know he said in interviews that he thought Maniac was the closest that he's ever come to what he felt was cold-blooded murder, <laughs> right? And he always talks sure. about, like, I killed this person in that movie. Mm-hmm. You know, I yeah. killed that this person mm-hmm. in that. Just the way yeah. he talks, you're like, huh. And he's like, yeah, I didn't really consider that I was going around and doing makeup effects. I was more... I was going being called to go assassinate people. <laughs> Sure. You know, so it's a really weird That's what makes him effective (laughs) yet creepy. Yeah. At least he's getting it out this way, right? You know? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the thing, right? It's like this is some kind of therapy for a psyche that was damaged. Well, thank God he has an outlet for uh, murdering people rather than Mm -hmm. murdering people. So that's good. Yeah. But I'm trying, because I mean, like Friday the 13th part four, the final chapter, is I think the cruelest uh, Friday the 13th movie. I mean, just in the way that, you know, some of those murders are done. Mm. Yeah, I think so. People suffer, you know, yeah. in a Tom Savini murder. I think they do in The Burning also. But mm. I was really it on a toss like up of like, do I want to bring The Burning or The Prowler? And I erred on the side of The Burning because I'm like, I think it's <laughs> more entertaining. Okay. But watching it tonight, I'm like, I don't know that the, I think the effects work in The Prowler, the murder scenes are more effective in The Prowler. There's like three of them and they are like just painful and hard to watch you know or you're like jesus christ i know i like this stuff but <laughs> what what you know yeah is it uh why do we watch these kind of things i mean watching people get murdered we're afraid and- we're afraid colin because we ourselves do not want to get murdered it's a safe outlet to confront that fear right there's we no actual to, risk yeah. involved 
Is there a difference? Okay, so, you know, uh, we watched Valentine a little while ago. We've been doing some <laughs> slasher Colin's films. Colin's still stuck on that, huh? Still stuck on that. Well, it, is a, it is a bloodless movie. I'm using that as a... Uh, okay, so I'm holding it's Valentine antithesis. up. It, it, we're, yeah. The antithesis... The an, antithesis... There we go. Yeah. The, of the perfect like example this. Yeah. of the, the rejuvenation of the slasher movie. Sure, yeah. Versus the 1980s Versus what version. we had before, yes. And so, like, if you take away that cruelty, you know, mm-hmm. that was present in the 1980s version. Before we were, you know, I think on the last episode we were, because what did we do? Uh, uh, um, New Year's Evil also, which was also a bloodless 1980s uh, right. slasher film. Wow. Yeah. That movie's completely escaped my brain already. Like, <laughs> I really have. I don't remember anything from that Nothing. movie. Nothing. Nothing. Well, because there's, there's no murder scene. Yeah. But yeah. when you think back on The Burning, what are you going to remember? Uh, a lot. I mean, the there's a lot scene. going on. Yeah, uh, there's there's a lot of murder there. Um, a lot of the people getting a lot of people get punctured through the neck. Yeah, yeah. stomach a lot of neck too. Murder. Stomach. A lot of stomach. A lot of neck murder and stomach mm-hmm. murder. Yeah, a lot of neck murder. Those scenes will stick. You know, fingers being sliced. Yeah, off that's always yeah. Because yeah, <laughs> you're just like, I don't want to lose my fingers. Yeah. The oh. the way the 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 cheers were around his upper arm at the end of the movie yeah, it was uncomfortable because like, it's just kind of gnawing yeah, at the arm that, as it's stuck that yeah. reminded me like it wasn't as extreme but it kind of reminded me of like a scene from a movie that always like grosses me out a little bit is the Evil Dead remake when the top part of her leg above her knee got oh, cut when her knee yeah, was bent yeah. and that like ooh like because then you know when she flexes her leg, it's gonna like rip Ooh, it open even yeah. more. Yeah. So, like no. that was like uh, uh, that. that. That's a good example because <laughs> yeah. that's like that is one of the only like ma- and that's from a major studio. Yeah, yeah. M- m- it's one of the most memorable modern splatter movies. Yeah, yes. and maybe that's the genre that these are. We yeah. say slashers, but splatter. even within there that, is, there's yeah, we get over splatter. splatter. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, before we leave Savini, I also want to say that uh, you know, I mean, obviously, we'll probably talk about him a little bit more. But um, he also did. Uh, he directed the 1990s remake of Night of the Living. Dead. He did indeed, which I happen to love. That is uh, not your beer. I'm sorry. Oh, how dare um, you! Uh, I happen <laughs> to love that movie. I think it's uh, it's a very good. As far as like, if we're gonna remake, I don't know if I've ever seen it. I don't what? think I have. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, why? What? The the remake the of Night remake of, of, Night Night of the Living Dead. No, I With think I've Tony only seen Todd? the original one. I don't think I've ever seen that. Oh my god! Guess what my pick is next time. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! I have that. I have it's it actually in the it's, library. It's really good. Yeah. It's actually really good. It makes some uh, deviations from the original it does. to make it. Uh, I mean, there are people who say it's better than the original, but I mean, I, I you know, well, that might be a discussion for another, <laughs> ooh, yeah. another day. Ooh, let's save that one. But yeah, ooh, that is a discussion that could be had. Well, he also uh, Savini also got to work with uh, one of my movie heroes, Dario Argento, uh, because Argento came to America briefly to make a couple of movies to see if he could, you know, become a commercial success here. Sure, he did not. So he retreated back no. to Italy. But while he was here, he made a movie with uh, George Romero. It was called Two Evil Eyes, and Savini mm. did the makeup effects for both. So nice. uh, he got so to work a, with Dario Argento. So that's Argento, Romero, and Savini? And Savini. Ooh. Two Evil How Eyes. How is the movie? It's two different stories. So yeah. it's two Edgar Allan Poe stories. Okay. Um, I mean, it's the sensibility. I mean, it's not like the greatest thing ever. Sure. But right. it's not bad, you know. Okay. I mean, I prefer, I think, Argento's weirdo over. It's Harvey Keitel in a Dario Argento movie. Damn. All right. You just, you're just you saying all the words here. This feels I can like see a that. combination yeah. of yeah. a bunch of things that I like. Uh-huh. That seems like something that should have happened sooner, honestly. Yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah. So it's a good, sounds like a good combination <laughs> yeah, of things. It's not bad. Okay. Yeah. It's got some, yeah, some weird stuff going on. Weird's it, but, cool. Uh, weird's good. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so these splatter films of, uh, of the 1980s. And if you take, if you take that stuff away, maybe we already covered this. Mm. I, I'm just uh, to sure make the before, point but. that like, if you take it away and you concentrate more on, I mean, the, the scream ish movies, uh, scream era slasher movies, yep. they do have more of like a driving plot where the burning, it's a lot of people. And maybe it's because we're familiar with, uh, how slasher movies are built. You're kind of ahead of it. And it's just people in the woods talking amongst themselves right. about nothing. Cause you don't really get character the way a modern. It's not important. Movie is no. And then when they are, when they do stop and talk, it's about fucking. 
it, like, it, basically, they're just talking about their their relationships relationships to each other and just like, oh yeah, they're just it's it's flirting until they get killed. Basically, it feels like a lot of it was just padding for time. You know, but like they, a lot of it was padding for right, time. Like, padding, yeah, the padding. And for even time still, is this just is like, hey, hi, how you doing? This had to had to have been like what ninety minutes, if that. Like it was, it didn't seem very long at all. No, and it's so. all about. Well, it has fucking. a really long intro. The intro because there's there's uh, there's the inciting incident that right. a slasher movie has to have, mm-hmm. and then there's like a little bit in the hospital. Mm-hmm. I think before the credits. So I mean, you're like ten minutes into the movie before credits, and then there's like, mm-hmm. right. you know. The, the movie mm-hmm. proper. But there was that whole scene of them canoeing like together, all like all the kids at camp that just went on for forever and it was nothing but them splashing each other and like I having like a good time. Scene. I know, but like that to me I was like they're padding for time. There's cause like there's not even dialogue. They're just laughing and splashing yeah. each other yeah. for like and one of them minutes. Sinks. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. That goes on for like, so whoops. long. Right. It's fun. I enjoy it, but it doesn't do anything it, for the movie. No, it does it's it's to it's not hit leading that anywhere. Minutes. But it's fun. We'll see. So I like I got, seeing the kids got, interact. You're saying it's fun. You're saying that it doesn't go anywhere. And I sit there going, like, I'm just curious. I'm not how bothered this plays. by it. I just. <laughs> well, the thing, that, the thing that I like about those scenes, but at the same time, I realize that, like, mm-hmm. obviously, it's like, could you cut this scene out and still have a Absolutely. movie? Absolutely. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. But it gives you in in the absence of character development right which like, there is written, none of you know, like, in this my movie. father used to beat me with a you know whatever and like then that becomes a thing that pays right, off later right, right. in the structure mm-hmm. of you know movie storytelling mm-hmm. this doesn't give you that it's more like the idea that you are hanging out with these people mm-hmm. and so if you're hanging out with them for 24 hours you don't get to know anybody like really mm-hmm. on a you know deeply personal level you're right. just observing their behavior mm-hmm. in which case it feels uh improvised you know it's like they're just okay in this scene we're gonna go you know paddling canoe paddling down the river and so now we're just watching it so it, the the upside to this that I miss from modern movies is it feels more real. Mm-hmm. Like you're watching real human behavior. Sure. Then everything now where it's like scripted so much and it feels artificial because right. it's overly scripted. Right. And they won't take the time just like, all right, play around in the canoes and, you know, fight with each other. And maybe one, you know, they, they, they do end up sinking everything, but you know, just tease each other and have fun. Well, it works in, when the, the characters are, you know, because this takes place at a summer camp mm-hmm. and there's scenes like in the mess hall and stuff like that where not everything feels 100 percent, you know, they don't all feel like lines. There feels mm-hmm. like some ad libbing sure. going on, which is like, OK, it's either the hallmark of a badly written movie or, you know, and the actors were just kind of left up to like, you guys are going to do your own thing to keep this scene moving, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. But it does add like a kind of a what is cinema verite, you know, like you're actually yeah. there watching real people do right. stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, some of it felt like that, especially when uh, when what's his name is giving his uh, the head the head head counselor is giving his little uh, remarks yeah. to all the kids. I say that because I don't feel like he's speaking. To he anyone. was he was oh. standing in a corner of a room by himself. It feels like, <laughs> like everyone was gone for that day. Yeah. Like we shot the wide scene where you're there. Now we're just going to show you close up, but everybody else is gone. I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if those were reshoots to pad the time once again. Because that, that stuff say, had no you consequence. You say reshoots, which I don't think is the right label for them, because I don't think they reshot anything in this yeah, movie. Yeah. That's not a possibility. Think, yeah, but it was it, definitely a day by yourself, we're shooting you yep. and nobody else is around. We're going to need some way to transition between scenes, so, sure. so you just, just talk keep to, talking. Right. Talk to nobody right now, and we'll just cut it in, you'll be yeah. fine. But they do the ADR of like everybody, it sounds like, yeah. like okay, settle down now, we're going to actually right. tell you about this canoe trip we're going on tomorrow. And it looks like he's trying so hard to not like a cue cards or something like he keeps looking at this one very specific place off camera that it looks like he's trying so hard to keep his eyes off something else yeah <laughs> yeah it's weird it's a weird scene it is kind of strange the okay so uh, but if we're going back like what's this movie about right i mean what what kicks this <laughs> that's we ask a half yeah, hour but, into yeah. The yeah but it's a <laughs> summer camp horror movie like you right, guys yeah. have seen all yeah, there's basically it. there's friday the 13th there's the burning sleepaway there's camp. Sleepaway camp. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. And maybe which this felt like sleepaway camp. Yeah, it did a lot. Yeah, it did. This to is me. this is the independent East Coast horror movie. It that is we're uh-huh. talking about. really. Like, is. They're all shot, and this one was shot in Western yeah. New York. We need to bring it, this, this. May have been shot at the same place. Right? Sleepaway camp it's two camp, was shot camp Arawak or it whatever. May have been because that looked very fucking familiar. I'm mm-hmm. like, is this the same place? 
Yeah. Well, I mean, what? You had the same trees and foliage. It, it, it felt like the cabin, but I'm like, all cabins are pretty much looking the same, mm-hmm. right? But this felt like the exact same cabin. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. they probably all look the same. I want this genre to come back. I want some more cabins. Yeah. Want, no, summer, want, summer camp horror summer movies. Summer movies. What's yeah, but would you do the same? Well, I mean, the closest thing we got was not the horror version, but was the. Uh, Wet Hot. What, yeah, Wet Hot American. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Which I'm like, yeah. It's like, you know, put Jason in that, and you're good to go. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> oh shit, put that on Netflix. I'm yeah. there. <laughs> Damn right. Start right? killing Paul Rudd by right. yeah, Jason and Michael yeah. Black. Yeah. That, oh, nailed, yeah. that nailed like a, a version it, of yes. Summer Camp that like you haven't seen since the 1980s right. movies. Mm-hmm. And uh, and they they keep on trying with these fucking Friday the Thirteenth remakes and spin That's not like, getting that. Like, no, oh, you got hire those writers, right? <laughs> Fuck it. And then just, bring another guy in there who puts Jason. Yes. In just put him in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we could get it. Because, it, like, I, uh, man, that Friday the 13th, like, remake could not feel farther from being at summer camp. You know what I'm saying? Like, it yeah. doesn't capture any of the feeling uh, of being at summer camp. Do you have a problem with camp. a 35-year-old summer camp adult <laughs> yes. running around in that, that movie? That are completely hateable. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like that? Yeah. Okay. But, like, it doesn't, it, you don't have to work very hard to activate that nostalgia. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't take yeah, much. you shouldn't have to. It, yeah. It's an easy setup, you know? Well, I keep on complaining that, like, new movie characters in the modern uh, slasher remakes are these cynical, hateable people. Right. But I'm going back and watching this tonight. I'm like... <laughs> they're you know, pretty gross. Yeah. But some of it's, well, like, within the fun. realm of, like... Costanza's fun. Costanza's fun. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I like Costanza I'm in this having movie. to Costanza in this movie. I'm all, I like him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's, bad. like, the kind of... Uh, they all... They don't... Do they feel like stereotypes to you? I feel like they started off that way. Like they started off, you thought you had the template of who they were, right, but they but they, they don't have really have enough personality to fill the template. Don't, but they're also like, at certain points they start saying things and I'm like, I would say that. Mm-hmm. Like a stand is just like, because the one girl asked him a question, like, what's going on? He's like, I don't know. Am I swimming out there? Just wait a yeah, second yeah, yeah. to find yeah. out. I'm just like, I would say that. that. doesn't seem like, those are the, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't right. seem scripted. No, no. It's like, like, yeah. like, I'm not swimming out there. Just wait a fucking second yeah. and see what happens. Like, yeah. shit like that shows up in this movie. I'm just like, that feels real. Like, I would say that. Yeah. Like, give it a minute. Yeah. So, you know, it's not all, it's not all horrible. It's not all like total stereotypical of yeah, those characters where's the, be doing the stuff. The jock. I mean, are we talking what was Br- Blazer? Bla- Glazer. 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 Yeah, he's not, doesn't feel, jo- he feels like the, uh, not jockish, but more like a fucking, uh, it's, it's not jockish. But I don't, like I get what you're saying. It's like, more like the, just the tough guy whose dad beat on him a lot. Yeah. And so he's like, got to project it on someone right, else. Right. So he's got to yeah. do it to someone yeah. else. Yeah. But thank God the movie doesn't say anything like this. So we're no, not at all. We're on, extrapolating. Yeah. We're psychoanalyzing oh, yeah. this guy, yeah. which I like better. It's like, sure, just yeah. give me the guy, and I'll figure out where he yeah. came from. Yeah. Don't have him fucking go off on a monologue. Yeah, yeah. Don't need that. <laughs> about who He's obviously what. got problems. We'll figure He's it out. He's a very reactionary person. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> but guy like, walking past him, what the fuck are you looking at? Yeah. There was yeah. He wasn't yeah. even near you, dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he ran. Jesus. He ran a good 12 feet to catch up with that guy to say, what are you looking at? Like, like, what the fuck are you looking at? He's one of the most like standout personalities in the group. It's strange how that, you know. Because yeah. there is like the uh, the the counselor dude Todd right Todd Mister yep. Denim Todd mm-hmm. Todd yep. yeah he has got the Canadian Ash. tuxedo going on which yeah. I was like there was a scene where you know he's telling okay so one of the kids is Alfred Albert Alfred, Alfred. Uh, spies on one of the girls while she's taking a shower yeah mm-hmm. and so then I'm like okay it's I'm curious how this this dynamic is going to work where you know you ha- the the counselor has to punish. Alfred, yeah, for what he's done, right? Mm-hmm. So he brings him back to the cabin, and he kind of has a talking to you know the guy. And I'm like, right. it's like, yeah, okay, you know what you did was wrong, and blah 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 blah. Well, he's more forceful than the way I'm giving it to you, right? But, you know, then he has to, then the kid walks away, and I'm like, but then when Blazer's like, you fucking around with my girl, you mean blah blah blah, and I'm like, that's why you need guys like that in the pack Mm -hmm. you know Mm because they keep the other kids in line (laughs) and then and i'm like but then when the counselor comes in and he's like blazer why don't you step off you know blah 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 i'm like blazer could fucking beat this guy's ass but the thing that's keeping him in line is just his age and position right because blazer's like 16 years old right he doesn't realize is he though because i feel like the ages of the people this camp range from like 12 to like 35 we, I, there's a we, wide we range. Down. Let's put it that way, because yeah. I can't 
I can't accurately gauge like, ah, eh, they're this year old because I'm just like, I don't know anymore. Because we're getting oh, there was a girl who was like smoking the one that's smoking. Oh, then it's Tiger. Yeah. The she 12, looks like the she's twelve like year old who's yeah. smoking. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, definitely twelve years old. Definitely smoking yeah. in this movie. Fisher Stevens and Holly Hunter. Fisher look Stevens young. is fifteen. Yeah, he's gotta yeah, be because yeah. yeah. he's fucking gangly and young and shit. And what year was Short Circuit? Eighty. Five. No, what? no, what no. is this? I was like, what? They how I was like, it, no, this is 81. No, okay, I'm gonna look this up. I'm gonna look this I'm gonna up. Go I'm gonna look short circuit. Nope. I need to I'm know. gonna say 86. That's my final for short circuit. For short circuit, oh, it feels like no, right, no, it feels like it should be. It was 1986. How was this only five years? What he changed this a lot five years later, five years. Holy oh, shit. What happened to him? Did he, did Puberty hit this boy hard. <laughs> How old was he? Maybe he's nineteen. When he, did he get some like Captain America serum in between Captain now and then? Like movie. he Maybe. he looks like the before version of Captain America he in this does. movie. He's he really scrawny. Does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, that's well, a maybe this movie was such a big success. He was actually able to eat some steak or something. <laughs> well, the, what, what? It forced puberty on him. Like <laughs> that. What happens with success? That blows my mind. I cannot believe that's it was only five crazy. years. Yeah. Pat it out in he, short circuit. Well, he looks like a middle aged man in short circuit. Like, <laughs> he does. Acting. He's like, 35 years old. No. <laughs> no. No amount of acting is going to get you to. Oh, my God. No, I can't believe that. I'm yeah. going to do. I'm going to dive into that. Yeah. This yeah, podcast. Like, what yeah. happened to the man? Well, you got to track, like, what other. What else he was in between? We're also going to have to uh, pinpoint cocaine. when cocaine. he dated Michelle Pfeiffer during all of this. Yeah. I have. <laughs> I, I never thought I'd say this. I'm going to have to look into the career of Fisher Stevens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to really dive deep into that. Is he on the wall yet? No. Uh, He's got to no. be close. Yeah. This is this may be number two. Have we had him in anything else? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. Know. All right, this is number one for you, Fisher. All right. Well, before the time totally gets away from us, we need to talk about a guy named Cropsy. Crop. We should. You ever mm-hmm. heard that name outside of this? Yes, have, I've seen yes. the documentary Cropsy. Oh, you watched the documentary? Yeah, I've seen I it like three or four it. times. It's really good. I Who is Cropsy? So is this the Cropsy. Upper New York? Dude? Yes, okay, Cropsy right. is a Upper New York legend. Uh, it's kind of like a hook hand. It's it, it's a yeah. New York State legend. Don't go in the woods. Don't stay out at night. Hook hand guy. But the, the documentary like dives people into would send their the origin. Camp and yeah, and there was a specific shit. camp in yeah, upstate yeah. New York where he. Don't go out there. Cropsy will get you. Does it have something to do with the metal institution or something? Yeah. Like this, that? Well, right? that's what the documentary goes into. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I believe uh, the, the the women of uh, My Favorite Murder went into this. Mm-hmm. They did an episode on this whole thing. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. the last. Yeah. Check time out the I documentary. It is awesome. Yeah. I want to watch that. And it is also the guy, the people that did the Cropsy documentary also did uh, another documentary after that called Killer Legends. It's all about the other types of legends that exist. Mm-hmm. Like, now that um, one I've heard of. Yeah. Are that one. still like New York based? No. Or? No. Just this is American just ones. Like they talk about, um, like, uh, like poison tr- Halloween candy and things like oh, that. Okay, yeah. They go in, they they to- pick like four big ones and they go into them in Killer okay. Legends. But they're both really well done documentaries. Nice. I've watched them both a couple times. Where can we, really can we find them? Somewhere? They're I think they're both on Netflix like or Hulu. Used to be that's how I watched yeah. both of them. That's right. Yeah, so, that's right. That's right. Yeah. All right. We'll find yeah. those. Yeah, I yeah the they're really one. good. Well, I don't think this has anything to do with actual Cropsy, as far as I know. I think they no. just borrowed the title. It was I, by uh, the mm-hmm. Harvey, the Weinstein It's because of the location, too. I, you know, yeah, so, it's yeah. Upper New York. It was, right. they're I think that is into, the only element that comes over from actual Cropsy legend and all that stuff. Yeah, because this is, uh, I think, the first Miramax production. It's uh, I believe so, yes. It's credited to, uh, created and produced by the egomaniac Harvey Weinstein. Mm-hmm. And that's the nicest title we could give mm-hmm. him yeah. at this point. Yep. And yeah. considering some of the motivations of some of these characters, uh, you could really feel that underlying tension mm-hmm. of yeah. the Weinstein. Well, I think I saw something, and I'm trying to think if it's on this disc, the Scream Factory put it out, and was the documentary made after the uh, Harvey Weinstein scandal, but I think oh, I somebody was saying, was like... It? I don't think it was. He, Harvey was still Harvey, like, back well, I mean, in the I'm day sure Harvey was, was yeah. always Harvey, mm-hmm. yeah. but I can't imagine, like, the documentary was I feel like it was made after yeah I'm not I don't, I don't know I don't, yeah but uh yeah it yeah. really even like even if it's not you could feel that influence and it feels really awkward in a few scenes you're just like whoa yeah because it's uh I mean it, the whole movie is basically about you know like uh human teenage you don't like Alfred. mating uh yeah interactions and they're all awkward and, all awkward, uh, sometimes a little forced, yeah. and uh, 
not everybody wants everything that's happening. It's mm-hmm. it's yeah, it can it can get very awkward. Yeah. Um but to start it off, there's an incident with you know, cause all these horror movies have to have something. The inciting incident. These kids uh hate the caretaker of the uh yes. the camp. With a dude with a nose like that, I'd hate him too. Yeah, he's got like a skull nose. I mean he's, like he's you got can a pig nose. Into like, his you, fucking yeah, head. yeah, I was Man, really I was bothered upset by it. Yeah. By this man's nose. Yeah. That's probably the actual actor. We're sorry, sir, if you listen. I'm very yeah. sorry for, sir. I'm sure but, he's uh, aware of the effect he has. I'm sure he is. <laughs> yeah. He would have to be if he's not. I uh, mean, he got cast in that role for a reason, right? right. You know, yeah. exactly. Like, well, these kids, they uh, pull a prank and they set him on fire. Yes. They but OK, do. but the way they set him on fire is crazy convoluted. Uh, like, this is what Malort will do to you. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> that that caretaker had a full on empty bottle of Malort. Like next a couple to his bottles bed. of Malort yeah. hanging around his bed yeah. as he's passed out in if his you cabin. If you don't know what Malort is, just Google it. Holy You'll find shit. Out. If you do not know what Malort is. <laughs> they, most people don't because it's a regional true. thing. It's very regional, yeah. uh, that's especially right. to us. Well, it's one of the most tasty beverages that I think that you will ever have. Do shots in your life. right now. Yeah, I yeah, would yeah. No chaser. No chaser. And then you have to obviously spit. Spread the the joy of Malort to yeah. your friends. I Please think do. after yes. you've had it, you know, just right. Yeah. Let them know what they're missing. Listener, yeah. if you've had Malort, give us your best description of what would, you think yeah. it tastes like. Right. <laughs> if you know, write in. Yeah. At uh, uh, on Twitter at Sad Freak Show. Yeah. There you go. What Malort tastes like? Yeah. <laughs> Sean's a big fan, so uh, I've actually. Believe it or not, and I'm talking to the people who know what this is. <laughs> We've uh, seen I've you come, drink so much of it. I've I've come to. Uh, should I say enjoy? I don't know. I've gotten used to it. That's uh, <laughs> no one else can say. Yeah, I know. That. I have. I have. Wrong surprisingly, I have gotten used to it. It's a big thing in Chicago. The shot of Malort and a beer combo uh, is offered Only like at every by bar. Crazy people. You, no one's the, forcing it on yeah, you, Sean. No, no, no. Advertising campaigns it's not is Malort bad. for when you need to unfriend someone <laughs> in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. There's a reason. There's that video. It's just like, yeah. God, this feels like a uh, mm-hmm. getting beat up in fifth grade. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's like that is accurate. Yeah. But you get used to once if you get hit enough, Colin, you get used to it. And I got used. No to one's it. forcing <laughs> you to drink it, Sean. They're not. Uh, oh boy, I really got used to it. Maybe I just I like the pain. Uh, uh, so we say this because there's a bunch of bottles that look like possibly the, right, Malort yeah. bottles. And Malort in the is like like it's right. a very specific and, and regional thing. So to see it in any context outside of our neighborhood liquor mm, store is very weird funny. to us. Yeah, so well, we right, noticed that wasn't. they were turned away. So who knows? But that who top knows? label around the yeah, neck really looked look just like it. Like it. Uh, but it leads to this man's death, uh, yeah. which I'm sure it's led to many deaths. Well, yeah, no, just so, okay. making alcohol. Die. But the, oh, right, right. Die. it leads to his uh, burning. But they the have title. a skull that has a like maggoty skull. a maggoty skull. It's very elaborate. With that they put in candles it. inside. Right. Okay, where'd they get the skull from? Is it real? Is it is that flesh that's on it? Or is it so. just like dirt? It feels yeah. like it's real. Yeah, okay. That, yeah. I have so They're many, gonna scare the hell so many questions. Crop, right. yeah. So they went and got a real skull to yeah. light up and why not just put the skull in his bed? I know, no, I don't light it up. Well, just, just put it in his bed. He knocks the thing off yeah. into the bed, it goes on fire, those are Tom Savini's legs apparently, yes. and yeah. Mm. Um so he becomes this hideously scarred mutant pe- person who like the vanity of the makers of this movie, because apparently being disfigured, I always thought Hollywood folks like that is the worst thing that could happen <laughs> to you is that really you could be Hollywood disfigured. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. if you're disfigured, it's like it's over. <gasps> Your career's you over. You may as well just jump over. in front of a train. You Game know, over. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. it's all yeah. over. Seven made a uh, a chapter of this uh, yeah. very prominent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so. I would not like to be disfigured, but sure, I none think of us there would. Are worse things that could happen to. But you. I could mm-hmm. survive it and be yeah. like, oh, I'll, you know, I can uh, work in data entry for the rest of my life. Yeah. Oh, you know, we'll my version of that is, I were always worried about like my eyesight and going blind or like that's, something happening. That's, that's worse. That's that's worse. That's worse that's because I could. Thing. Yeah, I'm out of a job for forever yeah. if I right. lose my that's eyes. So. Like as far as like. All right, disfigured in the face, but losing yeah. uh, that yeah, sight, sense, yeah. Yeah, that sense yeah. is, yeah, that's the fear. Yeah. Well, Cropsy uh, hates these kids. <laughs> we and, pretty much all rely on it yeah. at this point. Yeah. He returns to the summer camp and just starts slaughtering teenagers at uh, random. Right. All so these horny just, tre- teenagers. Is, is he just angry to... at teenagers at this point? Now I know because it's it a is different revealed. camp. Well, I know it's revealed that a, yeah, apparently the one guy or something at the Black camp Black across, was the first one across the lake, which has been burned down and everything. Yeah, so he just goes to any nearby. So he camp? just goes to the nearest camp, camp. Stonewater. Yeah, he goes to the nearest camp and starts killing kids. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's what it seems okay. like. So this is where I mean, obviously, there's 
murder sequences that happen. It actually sure. seemed like it took a while for the murders to begin. And oh, there were murders. Yeah, then there's the raft scene where like five people die in a spectacular fountain. Yeah. Geysers. Geysers? Geysers. Of gore. There are not old people of gore. <laughs> yeah. Just thinking that. Like, oh, the geysers of gore. Are, oh, the the geysers of gore. Of gore. <laughs> oh, that's, I mean, give it like uh, maybe 10 years and that's where most of the people we love uh, yeah. are going to end up oh. being. Don't say that. <laughs> oh. Oh, I do audience. wonder Sorry. that though when I go to conventions and like I'm like in 30 we years. We always wonder who are how much time meet? they have left. Well, I'm just like in 30 years, who are people going to be meeting at conventions? Right? People from any, like the, Saw. Right. But I mean, do we? Like, well, you're yeah. right around the you're right around the corner from that right now. Yeah, I but yeah, I mean, like, Tobin are Bell's there, probably like, out are there, there on the well, yeah. but are there well, he name is, effects yeah. people that we know now. Like once the people like the, the Alec Gillis's, the Tom Woodruff Juniors, the Tom Savini's, the uh, Rick Bakers, Rick Bakers of the world. They're not stars anymore. No, but like the, the last vestige of this era. It's going to be Greg Nicotero, wise, probably. Like we have Nicotero and he's going to lead it into the like, unless mm -hmm. who do we know after that? Yeah, no. I who did the makeup for all the conjuring? Uh, right. Creatures? Right. Who? I don't know. Who? Yeah. We don't know. Because like I rarely ever meet someone at a convention that like is from a movie that came out less than 20 years ago. That never <laughs> happens. It's yeah. always like, I'm always meeting yeah. people this from like movies thing. 30 or 40 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Because so. you could, that's the thing, that's the thing that my kid's going to miss. Like to just these No, I don't think they will. I think it's. on to, to follow. No, and, they're still going to do it. I just don't know who it's going to be. I don't think it's still going to happen. I don't think that's a thing. I, I don't I think it's too sparse and there's not like. The these, Avengers people are doing conventions right now as they're making these movies. Yeah. They're doing them when they don't need That's the money. They'll, you can, they'll just get yeah. rid of the older. There won't be, you know. It won't be genre it'll stuff. Be it'll be mainstream modern, stuff. But there's yeah. not a career you can follow, I don't think. There's not a. a not like it, there was. No, right, let's put anymore. it this way. Not like there was. But again, he's not expecting that. Or like the, the culture around him is not mm. what it was for us. Yeah. Uh, it just makes well, me sad. Well, because I mean, now. It's sad. When I talk to people, you know, about like uh, movies, they have less of a reference point than everybody watches documentaries on Netflix now. They don't watch movies. That's very true. <laughs> I do like a good Netflix documentary. Yeah, I, I do, though. Netflix yeah, I love shows and, and I do. Some fire festival yeah. documentaries. Because I like to like feel like, oh, I learned something. You know, I like <laughs> to feel like I was like, I didn't know that. Now I know that. Yeah. Like okay. That. Well, before our time is up. <laughs> I want to talk about the we are ending of this tangenting movie. all over. We the place are today. all over the place. Sorry, yeah, we, will, we basically uh, we'll what is it? It's a movie. slasher movie. It is, set it is a summer, summer camp <laughs> slasher movie made with a big pair of garden shears. Friday the thirteenth, the primary weapon. Yeah. Uh, starring, we're going to say starring Tom Savini because it basically is. I mean, yeah. I think maybe this one had the campfire legend scene before. It did. Uh, part two, is before it part, two? part two, which yeah. came out the same year. Okay, but I mean, obviously they were being shot at the same time, right? Probably, yeah. So, but that's yeah. And then Madman, I think, and that was eighty three. So that, yeah, uh, that would yeah. have seen these, and then you know made the, uh, theirs. Um, so the ending of this movie, and this is where, you know, now when you watch a slasher movie, there's because we've had all this uh, post uh, modern analysis of them. There's a structure that you look for, but when you go back and look at these ones, they're like still trying to figure it out. Mm. So where's your final girl? There isn't one. You're yes. It's kind of all over the place because it's focusing on Alfred. It's focusing on Todd. There's like two final dudes. Yeah. Two final dudes. It's basically. really weird. Final girl, in this case, the girl who I was like, she's going to be the one who survives this. She ends up like Todd sets her and the other to uh, go off. kids down the raft like, yeah. you guys get to help and send them back. I have to go looking for Alfred. Alfred, the peeper, yeah. has like ran yes. off. He got <laughs> saved the pervert. Yeah, he's going off to save the pervert. <laughs> well, you know, the yeah. famous, it's not the save the cat moment, it's the save the pervert. Right, yeah, save the well, pervert. That book did not sell as well as save the cat. <laughs> but his save archetype the is the nerd, right? Sure. Pervert is the nerd. Yeah, well, you could group it into that. It's the pervert yeah, in this yeah, movie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the pervert nerd are the same things, but maybe it's because sure. uh, Harvey Weinstein has something to Who knows? Uh, so... Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, I think it's fair to say that. I think we can safely assume that. that yeah, because he did write the story. <laughs> yeah. Um, sure. It's probably uh, partially autobiographical. No, I don't know. <laughs> but Alfred does every single chance that he fucking gets, like wanders off into the woods to go watch people. To watch screw. people fuck around. Yeah. And follow them. And he's like, are you going to go fuck around? I'm going to follow you. Yeah. And he is one of the heroes of the film. Heroes. Strange. <laughs> um, so, but here's the thing. Todd, like, tracks... Uh, Cropsy down to his lair. Right. 
and which is a mine shaft. Mine shaft. I'm not positive. Mine right. house it's kind of. It's a mine of? shaft right on shaft. the offset of a, uh, a ruins of a building where mm-hmm. we just get the foundations of a building in the middle of the woods, which, which is pretty have. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I like. The overgrown which, cement. Uh, yeah, which yeah, you got the cement foundations and everything, which I like is cool and everything. And then he goes in through a door, and then he's in like it is a mine mm-hmm. shaft. There's, yeah, there's mine, mine carts, carts and everything. Yeah. Silent so minecarts. It's, it's like They'll sneak up on you. It's Temple of Doom and everything. And cropsy has got the old flamethrower that yeah. breaks out at this the point. The old flamethrower. But here's my uh, question with this, and I, I guess I did kind of tip my hand here because I mm. asked you guys during the movie. It's like, because there are shots that are repeated, yeah. and it seems the tempo gets all off and weird, and it's like, I don't think that the original intent of this movie was that Todd was one of the kids who burned Cropsy. It five years ago. I don't think so either. I think, and I don't even think that like the time even works out. Todd says he was at a camp five years ago, but Cropsy was actually burned last year. So it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, they do this thing in editing where you get a whole sequence where Todd recalls the burning of Cropsy Mm. because that way it makes sense that, you know, somehow he's here. Right. That there's a reason why Cropsy would show up because otherwise there's no reason. Yeah. Just go and attack. But I think that's the intent of probably the original screenplay of this film was just that it was going to be killer dude gets burned. Those kids get away with it. He burns down the camp or right in yeah, the that's, fire that right, kills that's him. All the, right, that's all done. Yeah, but then he target. He gets out of the hospital and starts killing kids at the camp across the right. river. No relation or across the lake. Yeah. yeah, but the movie does all this kind of, and it really it does a little fucks heavy up yeah. the ending of this movie because a lot of the slasher movies kind of they they go out on a high point, which is where the killer gets killed, and you remember like what's going on here, and the final girl has to fight for their lives. Mm. But in this one, it's like. Our uh, camp counselor, dude, Todd, has to come in, rescue the the peeping Tom nerd from the killer. You know, at this point, he remembers. He's like, oh, my God, it's actually my fault that Cropsy looks the way that he does. Right? Because Which is horrible. Yeah. It's like, so you're actually a fucking piece of shit, too, because you burned this guy alive yeah. and then oh, yeah. <laughs> left. For no off. reason other than he exists and you don't like him. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's it. Yeah, but doesn't that, like, morally compromise? Exactly. Todd, you're Todd. It totally does. Like, what are you thinking, filmmakers? <laughs> like, what are like you we're done? supposed to root for him to kill this guy that he mutilated in the first place? Like, yeah. yeah. Where it's his fault? Yeah. 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 Well, I, yeah. Yeah. Obviously. He does actually take him out in a kind of a cool way. It is pretty cool. It is cool. I mean, he gets uh, Alfred... Breaks free of his bindings because, like you said before, he's uh, uh, first of all, he's bound by the mouth and head, uh, th- it looks like a belt or everything, but then he's also like pinned to the wall with the mm-hmm. shears mm-hmm. through his arm, these big garden shears, that right? Are- which Ooh. is his uh, uh, method of killing throughout mm-hmm. the movie. Uh, he breaks free of those and stabs uh, Cropsy in the back of the neck, and then uh, and Todd like- comes in, yeah, yeah, Todd comes in with his big fucking axe, mm-hmm. and just. Whoosh. Well, because there's the surprise, ha ha, I'm not dead after all. Yeah. Yeah. And then, wah. Todd right puts it right in his face. Right in his face. Blood squirt. Then they burn him. So that's the Tom Savini thing. You Not only do you fucking axe the guy in face, yeah, you, you got to light him, him on fire. Light him on fire. Yeah. And there it is. That's fucking, mm-hmm. it's, it's brilliant. And then the song, the music comes in. You know, I'm still waiting. But then, we get, the, hear... then we get the story ending, which is, oh yeah, yeah. which I like. I, I liked it. a lot. I'm a fan of that ending. What are you talking about? Well, we get into it. Looks like it's uh we uh, go from we pull out from the burning Cropsy who's stuck to the post and he's got the shears in his neck and the axe in his head and he's on fire. And then we cut to someone telling the story of Cropsy again, or is it? It's either of Cropsy again or of Cropsy. What has happened? Uh, what we've just seen. Um, it's like the story is being told again, and now we're going into the reality. Yeah, it's like the next year, or right? Yeah, of that the story being told. So it's another counselor telling his, his, you know, his kids yeah. the story of Cropsy and what happened. And he breathe, right? He'll find you. Yes. And don't Would, look. He'll see you. Yes. <laughs> and what was the last one? I don't. Uh, <laughs> oh, what, is, fuck don't what was the last? Don't one? move. Don't move. You're dead. You're dead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then cut to black. I'm like, I really like that he ending. Looked into like the camera for the last one. He though. did. He looked into the camera. I'm just like, this is good. <laughs> yeah. Like, I like that ending. It works yeah, yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all for it. I'm. I. I can't decide whether I liked because they were originally started closer on the counselor, and then they just pulled back. 
which I don't know if I wanted them to just stick on the oh, callback, yeah, yeah, yeah. which I thought would, would have been, sudden, yeah, because well, yeah, they, they cut in all of a sudden and go with it, which is cool, but I, I maybe if they just stuck with the pullback and then gone to black, maybe it would have been really cool, mm-hmm. but I like that ending. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it works for me. It's effective. I like it. Yeah. I'm still kind of disappointed, though, because the opening credits, well, the music in this movie is by Rick Wakeman, who uh, is from the yes. band Yes, who also did Dario Argento's Inferno. <laughs> <laughs> there you he go. used to play a keyboard with knives. Okay, so <laughs> that's, oh, oh, that's that sounds Psycho, pretentious you know. as all hell. I hate that. That sounds great. Um, but there's no reason to do that. No, not at all. That's why it's great. <laughs> no. I have no reason. Like playing the piano is fine, but playing with knives. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> what a fucking novelty. You're crazy. <laughs> because I'm a fucking crazy artist, and I'm just gonna. Well, boop, boop, it also boop, the boop, credits boop. Uh, promised bluegrass music, which we got, which we got in just that before canoeing, the canoeing scene. scene. Yep, yep, in the canoeing scene. But it also music in the girl. Girls bunk. Yeah, I forgot to keep track of this. Which I'm like, I, get, I was girls? distracted by the twelve year old girl smoking and talking about banging That's some dude true. or whatever, and I was like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> Opening credits, it's like music and girls bunk by. <laughs> like a, okay, it's a specific credit. Yeah, very mm-hmm. interesting specific credit. That'd be a great IMDb credit. Yeah, there it is. All right, there it is. So mm-hmm. here's what we're gonna do, listener. Burn. We're gonna go around the table. We're gonna tell you whether or not uh, are we gonna review it. The burning. Well, yeah, we are. Now that we told you a little bit about the movie, we're going to review the burning and tell you whether or not you should watch it. Each one of us is going to do this. But before that happens, we're going to read some of your mail because you guys wrote into us and we always love to hear what you have to say. So we're going to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. He's got a pair of gardening he, shears today. He does. He kind of, he's it's a little a, melty. Plus, yeah. he's doing that, like, launch anything with his nose. Yeah. <laughs> oh, See into his sinus cavity. We're going to have to clean out his little doghouse and make sure that he doesn't gross. have anything else in there. <laughs> he's probably got empty bottles of Malort in his doghouse. Probably. If there was a person smell it from here. who drank Malort. Who drank Malort. It'd be Igor. And Sean. Yeah. Well, Igor, yeah. and Sean. Igor and Sean. So they you bonded what, over. You and me, Igor. Let's, <laughs> hey, let's, um, fuck you guys. I'm going <laughs> off with Igor and we're going to go drink some more. You're keeping that company alive, Sean. Yep. That's right. So uh, in order so you at home, listener, can join the Freak Show family, you can follow along with us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram, Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope that you'll write in and we will read your comments on air. We love to hear what you think about the movies that we do. So about the burning, customers also watched. <laughs> I love it. Is this a great? I love that's, it. That's a great name. It was like that, <laughs> that's a great name. It sounds like the auto reviews on Amazon. Well, uh, <laughs> customers also watched. Wrote in and said, "Prepare yourself for a young, obnoxious George Costanza." Uh, all right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was into it. Uh, Johnny That's New fine. Jersey writes in and wants to know if this was before or after his dancing McDonald's commercial. He says it's a setup from his Hershey's Kisses commercial. This movie was clearly not the summer of George. Uh, <laughs> I think that yeah, this was. Not. I think this was probably. I I feel like the McDonald's commercial was between this and the start of Seinfeld, which I mean was a couple oh, really? was a, quite a while. Yeah. Sure. But yeah, yeah, yeah. but. I, I've seen that commercial and it's amazing, but I forgot. I, I, I'm, I judge by his hairline. That's how I usually right, yeah, like, you know, it's, it's really full movie. in this movie. Um, yeah. In the McDonald's one, it's, it's pretty solid still too. But I think that like, he's so prominently featured in that McDonald's commercial that I feel like there was some knowledge of who he was at that point in time. Mm. So that's why I think it's a little later. I Did remember he, him. He I will do the research. Flatter, but that was like 1990 and he had hair, yeah. but it could have been yeah. a toupee. Did yeah. he try and get the hair back after Seinfeld? I don't, I don't know. I, feel I don't like know there if I've a, seen him much after. I feel Seinfeld. like there was a, a couple moments there where he had hair again. Really? Yeah. Maybe, maybe because I mean it was part of Costanza's character to not have hair. Yeah. So I mean, I right. I, mean, but I, I can see that. But you know? I feel like he that was his natural as Costanza. That was his. No, natural yeah, state. it totally was. But, but I feel like he went and tried to have hair again. Probably. From what I saw. Good. He's got the money sure. to try. He's got yeah. fucking Seinfeld money, richer sure. than we'll ever be. He's That's a very chameleon. Very he yeah. changes his appearance all the time. <laughs> uh, B Movie Poster Vault writes in and says, Well, you're on a roll. The burning is somewhat of a high spot in the endless parade of cheap, easily churned out early 80s slashers. I played it in a late night horror spot in one of my birthday movie binges, and it was a killer flick. Mm-hmm. But 
He actually <laughs> said that. <laughs> Especially that scene. How do you spell that? And you'll uh, BD dash doom dash tish. Uh, okay. Especially that scene, and you'll know the one I mean if you've ever seen the poster. That's the mm-hmm. river raft yep. scene. Yep. Uh, Dawn Lynn Johnson says, it's Savini. What else is there? Mm-hmm. Uh, Jacob Cotner writes in and says, I'll always remember this as the movie that made Tom Savini mm-hmm. not be able to do Friday the 13th Part 2. The True. film itself is a bit unremarkable, though it has some decent kills and pretty girls. The river scene is kind of memorable. The climax is kind of ridiculous. Just pretty meh. Keep up the awesome work, you freaks. Oh, thanks. Oh, thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks for writing in. William Douglas writes in and says, oh, wow, I've got a lifetime of stories as far as Tom Savini goes, inspiring me back in 1986 when I was nine years old, all the way to finally meeting him last year. I could nice. get carpal tunnel from typing all of that. Nice. That's awesome. I, I still have not met him. He's now, never been at a convention I've been at at the same time. It's weird. I have something signed by him that a friend of mine got. But I, I was going to say, uh, I'm not a fan of going to conventions to meet mm-hmm. people because mm-hmm. I'm always I'm the like, don't meet your heroes kind of guy because mm-hmm. it would feels like it would be this morning uh i would kind of want to meet tom savini oh you because, know what you shouldn't because i've heard nothing but uh not good things about oh that's him. unfortunate so it's I, funny that that's the one person that's the one person I'd like <laughs> that's one or let's put it this way i don't uh, i'd be okay with meeting him I've, like, I've never personally cool. met him but i've also been told like don't don't have high hopes when you meet all him right. so. again I'll, all right i'll go back into my hole of yep, not meeting yep. people that's fine <laughs> i'm all go. for it yeah. smush all yeah. for it way to go <laughs> Uh, Ryan Larson writes in and says, a few years back, I attended a Monster Mania convention. He was a guest. One morning before the show started, we were both working out at the Hotel Fitness Center. I must say he was in great shape for his age, and he definitely enjoyed flexing in front of the mirror. As for his work, I have a soft spot for Creep Show, as I remember watching it at a very young age. He is Sex Machine. He has looked the oh, same. Right. Yeah, he is Sex Machine. So He's looked the same for like 30 years. That's very he true. He does not look any different. Uh, just He's for Men is his best friend. Yeah. 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 He, yeah. He, does not look, he does yeah. not look Fuck, that man. old yeah, at all. Yeah. So, wow. Good for him. Good for him. Uh, Amos Martinez writes in and says, I grew up on this man's work, and he's still fit my favorite effects man. His best work is, without a doubt, in Day of the Dead. Those end kills are absolutely disgusting. That was actually the first film to make me puke as a child, come to think of it. <laughs> That's awesome. What, I, what's send, the last film to make you puke Send in your child? puke stories. <laughs> tell, tell, <laughs> listeners, tell us about movies the, that made you puke. I want to know the breadth of movies that made you puke. Well, that movie you can kind of smell. Oh. Yeah. Day of the Dead. Yeah. All right, yeah. yeah. Okay. Tell us about movies that made you puke. I want to hear your stories. Yeah. All right. What's Tom Savini's best uh, best? Word? Don't don't ask that question. No, no. I don't think you, you, you can't. Pin, I would have to look at down. his list and think right, about it. But down. even still, like I like said, Maniac's the first thing I think of. Because but one, I don't know if that's one kill what I think from one movie best. is really great, and another kill from another movie is like that's also what's really the best yeah. kill in the burning. Best kill in the burning. Uh, ooh, I, I don't. I liked the, them all getting stabbed on the raft. I mean, that's a whole. That's a great. But sequence that's multiple. of it that's yeah. multiple yeah. especially the girl got the slash across her forehead yeah. she was good was yeah. like me the guy getting poked through the the throat's always a, yeah right because everything else is, is like yeah well i'm poked through the throat like i've seen that like i'm trying to figure out something like outstanding from this movie it well, i mean maybe it's the compilation where it's the rap scene but it's yeah. you know mm-hmm. poke through the throat is okay mm-hmm uh, There's one guy with the shears through the throat that gets pinned to the tree. I that, like that. The way you that was why? shot was really cool. That's yeah. that's it because that one had me convinced. I had to, my mind had to remember that he's not actually being lifted off his feet. <laughs> oh, it really did uh, yeah. because I thought like, holy shit, how are they doing that? Lifting him off his feet and getting him in the tree for that? I forgot that it was an effect at that point. Well, so I'm gonna <laughs> say that's the most effective because I forgot that he's just standing there and the camera work is doing all the magic. Mm-hmm. So that one is the best one for me yeah. because it had me convinced. I had to. Tr- actually physically figure it out in my mind what they were doing. Well, that, so bravo and, to that one. And okay, so like usually when you see someone get impaled and stuck to like a tree or a wall or something, yeah. their neck is like flat up against the wall or the tree. This guy, there's like an inch gap of where you see the blades come out yeah. of his neck and then it touches the tree. So yeah. like the the logistics of figuring that out because it's really easy to fake it when you just have someone pushed flat up against and you don't see the object coming yeah, out the right, other side. Just one thing going side. Into the front of yeah, him. exactly. Right. So and this that's one, it. This one happened to be would have to be like a round thing around his neck, right? Yeah. yeah. It right. goes in and then goes, goes around, around away from the then, camera. Right, yeah. And then it comes out. Right. Yeah, so that way you can turn it. The guy moves 
and yeah. it still sticks in the tr- yeah. yeah. No, that yeah. was a good one. Well, that Savini always says one. he he has a book I think it's called Grand Illusions. I think, yeah, and he considers you know he's doing magic tricks. You know, yeah, so I mean, I'm if, like, yeah, yeah, if you're doing it right, you really are. Um. Uh, let's see. Mike Welch writes in and says, I met Tom, Reggie Bannister, Forey Ackerman, and Ginger Lynn Allen all in the same day. As far as his best effect, the end of Friday the 13th, part four, headshot. He's talking about Jason the, getting the machete through the head and That's then falling good. down on falling it. On it. It's really yeah. good. That is a good one. That's one of the kills in the Friday the 13th game that you can do when you kill Jason. Oh, is awesome. it really? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah. No, that's pretty good. That's I mean, very part, good. part four is a pretty good showcase of his stuff. Yeah. I, yeah. I think, you know, and that was directed by the guy who did the Prowler. So, mm-hmm. yeah, the Prowler has three really good ones. But I think probably Day of the Dead is like the masterpiece just mm-hmm. for the amount of shit that he pulls off. Um, yeah, that a lot of uh, quantity. Michael Whitaker says, the first movie I ever saw Tom Savini in was From Dusk Till Dawn. Actually, the last thing I saw him in was Planet Terror, another Robert Rodriguez movie. And I think he's been in like... Mm-hmm. A lot of Robert Rodriguez movies. I that think he's in right. From Dusk Till Dawn show. He was in uh, Machete, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Christian Steele says uh, Tom Savini's best acting roles from Dusk Till Dawn and best makeup and special effects is The Prowler. I'm telling you, you got to go back and watch uh, Night Riders. Uh, hmm. the de- about last week's movie, The Descent, Christian Steele writes in and says, I think this might be a too good for the freak show movie like Train to Busan. <laughs> I give it uh, three and true. a half stars. True. Keep up the good work, superstars. As always, I will. it will be a good listen to hear your comments. Thanks. Thank you. It could I, be that's... argued most Neil Marshall movies are probably too good for the freak show, but... Maybe. But here we are. Doomsday. That's a freak show movie. (laughs) Um, Jacob Cotner writes in, and again, hello. He says, I call this movie the worst possible day of all time ever. These women were doing what they loved and are sucked into a vortex of terror. If you watch this in the dark with a good sound system, it's the best. I'll never forget the claustrophobic feeling I got from the first time I saw it. The ending is the best part. Ultimate hopelessness, then credits. Highly recommend. Did not enjoy the sequel. Love the show. Hello to you all. Oh, thank you. That was really nice. Thank you. I'm glad you yeah. guys like The Descent as much as we did. About our previous previous episode, Frank and Hooker, uh-huh. Travis Legler writes in and says uh, when he saw the VHS box that we posted <laughs> on Facebook. Want a date? He says, where's my Johnson? That's all I hear when I see this. <laughs> yeah. Did she say that? <laughs> Uh, Someone else said that. That's that's movie. where at the end of the movie know. when his head gets put on the girl's body. That's what he says. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. he says, "Where's my Johnson?" Oh, Jesus, I missed a good one. Didn't yeah, I? <laughs> you did. Yeah, uh, you should go check that one out. Yeah. Um, okay. And then I said, you know, one of the things was like, how does she do that with her face? Because she has this amazing ability, the actress in uh, Frankenhooker, to like make contort her, her face. Wait, yeah, yeah. Well, lower well, lip you goes this, one the, way, and this, the upper the, lip goes. Yeah, uh, yeah but it's like uh, way more extreme. Than is that. it really? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. The upper lip goes the opposite direction of the bottom lip. You can't do it. Nobody can, yeah. but she can. I said, how did she do that to her face? And Sean Rogers says she got coaching lessons from Sly Snow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good one. I like uh, it. All right. That's pretty funny. Good job, Sean. Uh, Chris <laughs> Huddleston. He writes in. What's up, Suits? And he Chugs. says, uh, I'm glad you brought up that the movie industry no longer has any interest in mid-budget films. One genre that's pretty much dead was- <laughs> It's like was, the middle class. They just, yeah. It's yeah, gone. Okay. It's done. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and he points out that the the genre that's pretty much dead and was big in the 80s and 90s is thrillers aimed at adults. Michael Douglas and Harrison Ford ruled in the East. True. That's very yeah, true. Yeah, the that's game. Very true. Yes. Yeah. He says, I was a little too young to truly appreciate a lot of those yeah. as a kid. Now that I'm an adult, they've all but disappeared. We're basically left with the one to $10 million Blumhouse horror or $200 million superhero flicks. Some of those are obviously great, but I'd love it if some studios would get back to making four or five $50 million one-off films a year <laughs> rather than gearing everything toward billion-dollar frames. I, I agree, make, man. They used it's to make a... like $30 million like mm-hmm. adult dramas, like thrillers, like that, and yeah. now yeah. they don't do it anymore. Oh, psychiatrist movies yes. in the 90s. Yeah, that's what he exactly. saw. yeah because in the 90s, like psychology was like sexy, so like that was like a whole <laughs> A whole genre was like yeah. sexy psychology movies, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like they don't I need do to go that back and watch anymore. all those. Now that you make me think, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, but, fa- final analysis. And, but, uh, wait, wait. The co- color of night. The color of night. Yeah. With Bruce Willis. Oh my that. god, that's a freak show movie. They don't do them anymore. Yeah. yeah. Color of night, man. You gotta bring that. I keep on thinking of this. There's like legit like... penetration in that movie. <laughs> oh Jesus! Yeah. All right. And a swimming pool. 
Uh, they call it right? Yeah, yeah. I don't remember it being penetration. Yeah, like they said, is. you get to see uh, Bruce Willis's Johnson. Mm-hmm. Or something yeah, we like see that. it a lot. I'm mm-hmm. not impressed. Uh, okay, so that brings us to the most <laughs> entertaining part of the evening. The part that you've all been waiting for. The moment that we throw the burning <laughs> on the table and then tear into it and we'll see what's left. So let's find True. out what everybody thought of the burning, starting with John. Can you tell us your own name? What did you think? Well, nobody else is doing it. Oh, the burning. <laughs> oh, the burning. Um, uh, I mean, I had uh, I had a good time watching it tonight. Um, truth be told, I don't think it's really outside of anything of its genre or time. It feels it feels like it falls right in line with a lot of the uh, production that was coming out at this time. Um, so I don't think it's uh i don't think it's necessarily a standout from that era but i mean i did enjoy it i maybe it doesn't it doesn't need to be a standout maybe it just needs to be like a solid good slasher movie from the 80s which i think it does very well um i enjoyed it tonight um like i said falls right in line with it it's it's solid it's good i liked it um yeah i enjoyed it i, I had a good time i would recommend the burning. Uh, I'd watch it again. Like uh, I had a good time with it. So, uh, well, there you go. It's uh, short and sweet tonight. Michaela, <laughs> what did you think of the burning? I uh, I think it does retread on a lot of ground we've we've covered, and mm-hmm. like I would assume a lot of people that listen to us yeah, have, have seen as well. Like it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, you've it's, seen it. It's not new ground. No, it's it's not. Yeah, it's not doing anything. I mean, maybe the raft scene is something that hasn't sure. been done before. Yeah. This is a lot of it's more it's more waterbound than most of these movies. Yeah, well, even just like in a slasher, multiple people getting taken out in like one really small contained Doesn't area happen. like that. Um, that was really cool. It was cool. I liked it. Um, I yeah, like it's it's interesting because it does feel so much like we're gonna take the DNA of Friday the Thirteenth and switch a few things around, but like also not really switch it because like I did feel like the design of Karopsy at the end was very Jason like. Mm. Uh, you but don't see it a lot. Li- happened yet? Yeah. That's- no. Yeah. I mean, it was being made at the same time, right? The part, because the second one came out Jason. the same year, right? Yeah. 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 yeah okay. Even then, like even then, if you if you were to put them side by side, like there's a design wise, it's obviously very different. I also want to mm-hmm. point out that the that the design that you is on the cover of this is not what is in the movie. What are you talking I'm about? Gonna, like, Okay, that's this. that you're flipping around the other flipping cover. Around. Okay, like what they put on the cover? See, that this dude. This is the commissioned artwork yes. by Shout Factory. That dude yeah, is not, not in this movie. Mm. I feel like I mean I feel like you so it's he's so he's barely on screen at all he's, in the movie that it's not even he's that big. Barely of a, on screen. Yeah, it's I feel you see his face for I don't know what it's maybe very quick twenty seconds yeah, in the it's whole very movie. Quick. So. Um, and you hear about in the beginning in the hospital scene how he's the most hideous thing you've ever seen. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, show us. And then you just see an arm. And yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, horribly scared. All right. Yeah. Talk a big game, man. <laughs> a pirate but, apparently says yeah. that. <laughs> uh, it's, I mean, it's got some cool scenes. I I mean, I love that it's got that, like, because it's the early 80s, it still has, like, the 70s stank on it, you know? Mm. like, uh, And, like, I mean, summer camp movies are always a delight. You always know? fun. There's not enough of them. Um, because it's... Summer camp movies do that, like, so high school is a heightened reality, right? And, like, things that matter in high school don't ever matter at any other point in life. So that's why you can have... <laughs> Very true. That's why you can have high drama situations in high school, and, like, that's why teen dramas are so, so successful and things like that. And summer camp is, like, an even more condensed version of that, right? Because it's smushed down to, like, maybe a couple weeks or maybe two, three months max. So... And, like, it's a smaller ecosystem and, like, everything's fleeting because you right. might never see these people again. So, like, it's really, a, like, a high a high drama situation. So why are we not going back to that well more often? Like, you could... <laughs> Does you, it, do people go to summer school? Like, do parents... Oh, I camp went to now? summer camp all the time. Okay. Yeah, it was... Ugh, yeah, I went to summer camp all the time. I mean, I remember it. Mm-hmm. When I send my kid to summer camp. <laughs> it's, or filmmakers are just like, there's nothing like... We've already done that. But it's like, it, you did it 40 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There hasn't been a res- has there been a resurgence of actual summer camp? Wet no, it's hot. Wet That's hot it. American summer. That's it. Right. Yeah. Never there the was horror even, movie. There version. was a there was one with Bill Paxton in the nineties called uh oh god, it was like camp it was some kind of nostalgic 
Yeah. Summer, oh, get, but that's the thing. Like, bad. they seem to think they can only make it if it takes place in like the 80s. Like, they seem to think they can only make a summer camp movie that takes place in the 80s, and that's it. Because yeah. even Wet Hot isn't that like yeah, that's the, 80s. the 80s? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, let's bring it forward a little bit. Like, let's try it. You know. Um, so I, I mean, I, don't know, I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun watching it. Uh, it was real fun to see all these like people that would go on to like win Oscars and be fucking billionaires <laughs> be in this movie. Yeah. And some of them try really hard, and some of them yeah. not really try very yeah. hard. And y'all uh, got to start somewhere. Yeah, yeah, but like I felt like Cassandra was giving he's it doing, his all. He's like, giving his all. He's yeah. doing what he needs to do. He's yeah. doing what's expected of him. He he's seems like good. he's having fun too. Yeah. So I, I think I yeah. felt I felt like everyone had fun making this movie. Mm, some more than others. Mo- are most of them. <laughs> At least yeah. during that canoe scene, they're just like, yeah, they're having fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I, I, I mean, I feel like even the worst movies from this time are still always fun to visit for the most part. Uh, and this one, like, yeah, you've probably all seen it before, except the raft scene. But it's still fun up until that point, <laughs> and it's got a, it, it's got good forward momentum. And it, it even though I was talking about there's a lot of like filler scenes, it's still really short. So mm-hmm. it's really yeah. it's it's How easy to it? get through. It's uh, ninety one minutes. Yeah, right. It's, it's right in the sweet spot. Yeah, Just like hour and a half. Like getting it out. Yeah, you're good. So I'd, I'd say check it out. I think it's worth it, Colin. Uh, yeah, I went on recently and this is actually still, this is circling back on a thing that I've been doing over the past, like six months, maybe is going back and revisiting damn near every fucking slasher movie from the golden age of slasher movies from 1980 to 1983. <laughs> oh, wait. well, yeah. Cause you, it's quick by 83. They're right. less they interesting. Taper off. They, yeah. Okay. They start tapering off. But the deluge of, you know, basically now we have the spooky ghost in a house movie. Oh, Oh boy. So 20 years from now, it'll be like, yeah, you remember all those spooky ghosts in the house? There's like, you I hope leave so. the house without hitting one of them fucking things. I hope in 20 years it's a thing of the past. Mm-hmm. I, I hope oh, it's it not still be. going. It will yeah. be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, everything runs in I hope it's a dated concept by yeah. then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just the way, but then you'll have the nostalgia wave for it. Oh, God. Uh, 20 years after that, you know, well, they'll bring it back on a space station or wherever we live <laughs> in, uh, you know. It'll be a haunted yeah. space station. The haunted space station. That's fine. Um, so of those films, I'm going to say that this is one of the better ones. However, a lot of those movies are unwatchably bad, and a lot of them are boring. Um, like I said, That's they the haven't. Worst thing you can be. Just yeah, boring. I just watched a Final Exam. Yeah, That's how is that? A fucking boring movie. Yeah, yeah just, all right, I won't try. There it. are certain elements you need. I think and maybe this is the thing. Maybe the Friday the Thirteenth movies are the kind of distilled the reason that they survived and became the biggest, most successful version of this. Yeah, is because maybe they did distill it down to its best essence of the killer in the woods movie. You know, um, <laughs> someone figured it out, and they figured it out in the eighties. Yeah. Yeah. And it never got better than that. No. Well, but see, you know, people are listening to us going like, well, you know, I know what you did this last summer is a better movie than this. I'm like, okay, objectively, no. it's better produced. Sure. Like, it's slicker. There's some giant plot holes in that <laughs> movie, No, though. no. But there's No giant... pun intended. It's slicker. <laughs> <laughs> there's giant plot holes in this, too. I like, objectively, I don't know that you can call this a good movie, but the things that make it work are it's trashy seediness you know uh shot on the cheap in you know the actors kind of feel I mean, it just it has they a feel like real people i mean we're to, we'd yeah. be remiss to say like there's there's uh gore and there's nudity like yeah this, this, yeah the you know it's the things that draw you to movies of this era but those things actually those elements do give it like you know like uh they give it something that the newer ones are have been bleached out of. Yeah. The newer, but the new ones compensate with more character development. You mm-hmm. know, or they try and then they go off and they make these plastic people because they're overcomplicating it. You know, it's like <laughs> no, 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 take some of that out. But then they're like, well, then we don't have a movie. I'm like, just let people exist in a fucking screen. <laughs> you know, if you're a good enough director and they're good enough actors, you know, you'll right. be able to. <laughs> you'll pull all this figure off. it out. <laughs> um. But yeah, then the the gore effects, I mean, these movies live or die based on when you 
leave the movie. That's what I always say. But like 3D movies, why 3D movies suck now? Because you come out of a 3D movie not remembering like the scene where the fucking fish head got torn off and floats out right. into the audience and hangs like over the guy's head. In yeah. Front. Or nobody or grabbed it, an eyeball and was just like, whoa. Yeah. Or the yo yo scene or whatever. Like, yeah. yeah the yo yo scene. There's not a, there's not <laughs> a fucking harpoon the- shot at you. <laughs> yeah. In, right. In Friday the 13th, part three, wasn't there a wallet throwing scene? Yeah. All there's yeah. Yeah. everything. Yeah. 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 Friday the 13th, shameless. part three did it all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And now everybody so restrained we don't want to take advantage it's we don't not want so it, much 3d as is depth of a, field right yeah, yeah. we saying, don't want yeah. it to be a gimmick it's to enhance the film I'm like no, no it's it a gimmick works if it's a fucking gimmick you that's assholes it. and it's the same thing with a slasher movie you have to be trashy in order for it to be memorable mm-hmm. and you will remember scenes of slaughter from this film <laughs> right. uh years from now you'd be like hey is it that's a, yeah i remember the guy get his fingers cut off or you know the guy got stuck to a tree or whatever yeah um So on that basis, I'm going to say that, you know, this is one of the slasher classics. It's a minor, you know, uh, slasher classic, but it's it's better than some of the other ones. And I think uh, Savini's uh, filmography is so small anyway that, you know, just you should go check it out because it's, you know, part of that, you know, yeah. and to see the the stuff that this guy did. I feel like I'm eulogizing him this whole, I mean, he better does, not die this fucking no, week. Yeah, because you it. will have killed him. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I've done but, that before. We're, uh, but in, like we discussed earlier, like it feels like it was, uh, it's more, com- his career is more compact than we, than it feels like, than it, when, than it actually is. Yeah, he so got like, out of it because uh, that's what I was saying, without going into um, studio features, yeah, the the films that he was making were you got to remember this is like i mean if there is video cassette at this time it is in its infancy i mean yeah. i don't remember yeah. having i don't remember seeing a lot of video cassettes until like 1986 maybe it feels like that's when there was this explosion of video stores and it really got ramped up and then people started having them you know i mean before that it was the clunky top loading you know Betamaxes and you know <laughs> remote controls that were tethered to the machine and all this other uh. stuff. My dad had a Betamax and still has one that functions. Well, I mean that's good. Japanese My dad was one of those people right that was there. like Betamax is going to be the one. Oh, uh-huh. he bet against the porn industry and yeah. he lost. Yeah. That's too bad because it was the <laughs> better format. But uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I think you know these films were made with a theatrical kind of you know thing in mind, and later the business turned into the Charles Bands came along, and yeah. you know the direct to video uh, people, and and that would have been where Tom Savini probably would have been working. Well, I mean, I guess that is where he he sure. does his acting now, but um, yeah. So I I think that he just kind of quit while he was ahead, and you know, and maybe that was as far as he went, or maybe he changed his had a change of heart about uh, you know the type of you know uh, what he was actually doing. He was the killing people in horribly right. awful, gruesome, as long painful as he's ways. As long as he he did the things and he's happy with the career that he ended up with, yeah. But I would recommend that you check out uh, The Burning. I think it's a solid um, uh, horror flick of its era, Uh, The Burning. Worth the watch. There you go. So uh, that means next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by... Holly. Holly, what are we watching next week? Uh, I think we're going to watch... What are we watching? We're watching a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. Oh, shit. Called No Retreat, No Surrender. Oh, is this going to put him on the wall? I think so. He I think be. it is. Is he, he not, not on the wall? already on the wall. He's going to be on the wall. Bloodsport, and then what was the other one? Well, does Breaking count? Well, no, but sure. there was, Holly picked another Van Damme movie this, where he was a twin. Yeah. I wasn't here oh, for it. You guys watched impact. it. I didn't. Yeah, yeah Double Impact. But yeah. Did so, Double Impact get watched? Yes. Yeah. You watched it. I was yeah, not yeah. here for that one. I'm I did. Sure. All right, yeah. we did, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. Shit, I forgot so about that one. So this is going to be his third one. Oh then. my yeah. god! All right, this will be his third one. Yeah. And I made it all the way to this end of this episode, and I still can't remember the other Tom Savini movie that we watched beyond uh, uh, Monkey Shines. There's something else. There's something. Bitch. It's not coming to me. All right. Well, I guess that's it. <laughs> so next week it's no retreat, no surrender, and until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>